DJ Academics has a reputation for expressing outspoken opinions about the music industry. Welcome back it's your host Nancy Brown. If you are new here make sure you have subscribed to our YouTube channel. All things considered, he has been particularly involved in the feud between Drake and Kendrick Lamar. It is generally well known that Academics mostly supports the OVO side of things. I think Drake been around and probably been through realer shit than Kendrick. This has thus led to some extremely questionable assertions by Ak. However, he mainly goes unchallenged aside from a handful of haters on social media. Not say neither gangsters, but I could see like Drake probably being like, nigga, you're not like that. But recently, Oshi Jackson had to intervene after academics said something that sounded so ridiculous. All things considered, you can understand how this comment would come out as somewhat absurd. He ain't no pussy, he ain't no pussy bone on that nigga body. Quick to point it out, Oshi Jackson wrote every goddamn day that academics is responding to the feud in this manner and giving Drake this sort of bail should not come as a surprise at this time. The dispute has been going like this from the beginning to the end. That being said, not even academics can dispute the strength and influence of a song like Not Like Us or Meet the Grams. Drake is going to have a very hard time gaining any traction for the time being. At this point, it would be nothing short of a miracle if he succeeds. What Drizzy is capable of doing next is only a matter of time. Drake enjoys conveying contradictory messages. The rapper claims to have officially moved past his feud with Kendrick Lamar. DJ Academics claims that Drake is returning to offering his devoted followers what they love. Having said that, he hasn't stopped trolling. Even though Drizzy isn't recording trash songs anymore, he still sends K.Dot subliminal messages. Perhaps his most obvious to date is the most recent. Drake made the decision to share a picture of himself sporting a Tupac shirt that said, Only God can judge me. Even someone who has a passing familiarity with the Drake vs. Kendrick Lamar matchup can see how important the late Tupac Shakur is to each of them. Drake mocked Kendrick Lamar using Tupac's voice on the AI-assisted song Taylor Made Freestyle. He also showed off that he paid $1 million for Tupac's customized ring. Dot, on the other hand, believes that Tupac is his favorite musician. In the film To Pimp a Butterfly, he had a legendary conversation with the ghost of Pac and has paid tribute to him several times since. He included Drake's disparaging remarks about the rapper, which he took personally, into his smash song Not Like Us. You think the Bay Gone let you disrespect Pac, N.A., he raps. I think that Oakland show gone be your last stop, N.A. Kendrick Lamar worked in yet another dig at Drake during his pop-out show on June 18th. It was replaced with a significantly more damning statement that confirmed our collective suspicions. He has no regard for Drake. Give me two pot, read back and I might give you a new respect. He rapped. The ring in question was bought by Drake back in 2023. The Toronto rapper purchased the artifact for $1 million, according to Billboard. He's flaunted the ring on Instagram and worn it during several interviews. Drake made a similar purchase when he netted $2.6 million worth of Farrell's jewelry. He even flaunted the latter during the Family Matters video. Neither of these purchases sat well with Kendrick Lamar. It's evident from the Compton rapper that Tupac is an icon in the music industry. Some of Lamar's most incensed bars are influenced by the idea that Drake is the owner of one of Pac's most valuable items. You think the Bay Gone let you disrespect Pac, N.A.? He asked on Not Like Us. Even before he began rapping, Dot had a deep respect for Tupac. He said that as a child, he went to see the California Love video set. Years later, he ended his iconic album To Pimp a Butterfly with a rare interview with Pac. In 2015, Dot also wrote a memorial to the deceased rapper. I was eight years old when I first saw you, he recalled. I couldn't describe how I felt at that moment. So many emotions. Full of excitement. Full of joy and eagerness. Twenty years later I understand exactly what that feeling was. Inspired. During the pop-out performance, Kendrick Lamar completed the Circle of the Pack experience. When Dr. Dre joined him on stage, they sang California Love together. Naturally, Dre wrapped his stanza before Dot filled in for Tupac. It has been around a month and a half since Kendrick Lamar and Drake went to war. But a lot of Drake fans just haven't moved on from their artist's loss. What's your bank account, brother? Just what speak your truth. Alright, fuck it, bro. It's Anthony Salaya. Watching a DJ academic stream would show you that the commentator is always looking for fresh ways to show why Kendrick isn't the winner in this whole situation. In general, the idea that Lamar has been stream botting on YouTube and Spotify is one of the approaches that some have taken. That's who paid me. That's just the name that was on the account that I got paid by. A person claimed to have been paid off by Kendrick Lamar's team to increase his streams by 30 million was featured on academic stream last night. And that's how I feel, and I'm scared, obviously. For all of this, how much was the man paid? $2,500 it seems. Soon after he made his claims, supporters demanded evidence. They later obtained it in the form of a screenshot of a Zelle transaction where the man was paid $2,500 by Anthony Sale LLC. 
For those who might not be aware, Sail oversees Kendrick. But, 50 and a few online detectives claim that this screenshot might be a hoax. According to 50 and other comments, Anthony Sale LLC isn't actually a registered LLC in any of the 50 states in the United States. There are still a lot of gaps in the story that may be explored, even though the money may have been made by an unregistered LLC. For example, $2,500 seems excessive given the request. Furthermore, the song doesn't really require the increase in streams as it is already a huge hit. Fans are obviously not buying the story at this time, and before that changes, they will require additional evidence. That's what I think he did on Meet the Grams, and I don't know if everything on Meet the Grams was true. The hip-hop classic Meet the Grams will always rank among the greatest of the decade. It was not just that it was a nasty, terrifying diss, but also that it was released just minutes after Drake released his own. A Toronto rapper was immediately checkmated by Kendrick Lamar, and Not Like Us was the winning track a day later. Although Meet the Grams was well received as a song by both critics and fans, it was questioned as a Drake expose. Many thought Lamar was just making things up to hurt his opponent's reputation. DJ Head disputes this. DJ Head just released a new episode of Effective immediately. The moment Charlemagne the God was introduced to talk about the aftermath of the Drake vs Kendrick Lamar match, Match. He brought up Meet the Grams. I don't, I don't know, but a large part of it was I'm just a self-reflection. The co-host of Breakfast Club acknowledged that Lamar had made a significant record, but she questioned if the accusations he made about Drake were true. I mean, he told me everything was fat. DJ had responded with what appeared to be insider information from Lamar himself. Throughout Drake and Kendrick Lamar's feud, the radio host has remained in the background. On May 3rd, he stirred up controversy by saying that the reason the Six God didn't drop a diss was because he was afraid of what Kendrick Lamar had coming up. He also made fun of the rapper, saying that his microwave music was inferior to that of the Compton legend. If you enjoy microwave meals that's on you, he tweeted at Drake fans. We prefer cooked food on this side. That's it for today, thanks for watching. Tell us what you think in the comments section and most importantly subscribe. See you.